Hello, this is Joel Kruiswick. I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about using GitLab to support the Agile process. Now, you'll see on your screen a day in the life of the Agilist. Obviously, there's a number of different personas involved there. Everything from the developer who's living within the sprint or the iteration or working through a Kanban flow up to the, the program managers, if you will, at the front end of the planning process. And so I'm kind of going to walk through the different workflow that gets us from the ideation phase down into the actual work and what those components look like in GitLab. So here on your screen, what you see is a group view and within that a number of different projects inside the group. Now, in GitLab, that basically corresponds to either a hierarchical structure or a work structure. So in this case, I may be one developer who's working across multiple projects. I may be only working on one of these projects. Okay, but the important thing here is the roll-up of data. And part of the reason I wanted to start here is just so you could see that basic hierarchical structure. Now here at the group level, you see we've got a number of different side menu items, epics, issues, a number of other items, but we'll focus here at the start just to plan out epics into issues. So what I wanna do first is click into issues and you'll see here a roadmap. Now within this roadmap, you see we have a number of milestones that are coming to a close. Inside this, you see we've got a top level initiative. Okay, this epic at this level, is actually comprised of multiple other items that are child items that report up to the top. You can see we've got five out of 44 points completed as to the weight of the items below it. So if I expand this out, you can actually see the different levels of features associated to that top level item. Okay, same thing here. You can see I can unfold these items and, and see what's going on. Uh, at this top level. So not only did we plan these, and these can be fixed date or inheritive date, depending on the work below it, uh, but at the same time, we have an unfolding of the work. So if I click into one of these, you can see what this top level epic is. You'll see here I've labeled it an initiative. Uh, we wanna recreate the web experience. I would say that is due for an update, yes. When we scroll down, You'll see here that there are child epics that are part of this. And if I expand those out, underneath that, we get into issues. Now, what's important about this view is a couple of things. One is the roll up of data. So you can see here, we've got kind of a, a gut check, red, amber, green type of feel to what the feature health is that rolls up from the issues below it. You can also see information here about the number of issues that are opened and closed. And, and you get a glimpse of the health of your work items at that point. Now below that, you see we've got a number of different issues and you can see blue and green, which is the idea of open and closed. Okay, there are things that are completed work here. We can see the sprints and milestones that things are tied to. We can see the weight of those items. We can see the ownership of those items and the health of those items. Okay, so what's interesting here is these are rolling up from those multiple projects. Remember the first view of the group and the, the projects that roll up into the group. So we are in a cross project view here. I've got a node project. I've got a spring project. They're rolling up together into this epic level. Okay, so we're gonna dive into some of these components individually at the project level in just a minute. What I wanna highlight first though, is that each of these items is visible from this level and they can be tied to milestones or iterations or both. Okay, so we've got multiple time boxes that we can relate things to, whether your milestones are releases or trade shows or whatever they may be, we can tie into those. So let's talk a little bit about prioritization, backlog management, those kind of things, right? We have the upper level of the scaled agile framework here with the epics and the related work and the percent complete. We've seen all that. If we go to the list view, what we see is a view of all the issues across the projects. Okay, so I've got a cross project prioritization here. Now what I'm gonna do real quick is uh, in my prioritization view here, I'm going to set my label. 
not equal to bugs. I'm just going to filter out the bugs. So I'm only looking at the work that is the current uh, project level initiative type of work, right? This is the new work that we're doing. Now looking in here, I see we've also got some work that's been assigned, things that we're doing. So I'm going to one more time filter out anything that we're working on right now. Okay, so quick ways to filter down and, and get the view that I want in here. Now notice my ranking. There's a, a number of ways to filter this, okay? But I've set it to manual. When I set it to manual, what that allows me to do is drag and drop, reprioritize the work. Now, if I'm at the project level, I can prioritize the work there. In this case, I am doing a cross project prioritization of the work. So I've got a node item here that's further down the page. Maybe that's more important. I will pull that up to the top. Once I have done my backlog ranking and management, my prioritization of work, I can now go to the boards and that will be prioritized and viewable here on the boards. Now, in this case, what I've done is put together a board for PI planning. So if you're doing program increments, you can actually create some labels and do a drag and drop from this, your prioritized backlog on the left, into the time box structure on the right. Okay, and dragging across, you'll notice that the weight and the number of issues is being reflected here. Uh, what I can also do is actually compose a limit, like a Kanban limit on these, so that we know when we've reached our limit for any of these program increments. Same thing applies if you're doing sprint planning or anything else. Notice I've got a generic label here of time box. This is any kind of um, milestone type event or any kind of, of uh, schedulable content, okay? So any of these boards can be configured in a useful way that's relevant to the workflow that you have. So in this case, I, I did a program increment board. Let's take a look at just our current time box, okay? So this would be something like a current sprint, for instance. And you can see here, we've got doing completed accepted work. Again, this is a cross project view. So in our case, I've got this composed here. I've also got this composed at the project only level for teams that are only a project level team. They worked on one specific repository. So in this case, you see I've got a number of things that are in flight. Let's click into one of these and take a deeper look. So this particular issue I have uh, it's tied to an epic, so I have the context of the work, right? This is part of my UI refresh. Uh, it's part of a milestone. It is part of an iteration, okay? I've got multiple time boxes that are assigned to this. Uh, we can track time if we're really interested in tracking hours against this. Um, we can establish due dates. We have labels that are associated with this. Now, one thing I wanna call out here, notice the difference in the labels. We have a generic roll-up label, Okay, and then we also have what's called scoped labels, and these scoped labels are valid at the project level. They help us sort out specifics related to the project without cluttering up the labels in the group level. Okay, so it's, it's simpler for us to take a look at the, the work at that specific project level. Uh, agile weights, of course. Health status, this is, again, a gut check kind of red, green, amber type of feel. You can see all the detail within this view. You can also see that we got a design in here that's part of this. So we actually have design management within the issue itself. Again, we're eliminating external reasons to use other software that requires us to hop between different formats, hop between different softwares in order to find the information related to what we're building. So in this case, since it's UX related, we have this design, we have this logo that we're working on, and uh, I've got some comments that are in here, right? We can do reviews on that right within the issue itself. This is bringing the personas to work in the same place. Now, we talked a little bit about work context, the idea that I know this is part of the UI rollout. This is also where we can get the UX teams involved. We've got the product management teams involved. And this is where the developer is now taking this and beginning to do the work on the actual issue. So you can see here that this particular issue blocks another issue that we have in flight in a different project and that we have some uh, merge requests that have already been started. So the developers actually started work on this. Again, if you're using uh, other software, you may find that there's not enough information 
in the system you're working in, you'll have to click through to another system to get the information. That's really not what GitLab wants for you. We want you to be in your own UI, one UI, and see everything. So in this particular case, what we've been working on has we've seen translated from an upper level initiative through a feature into the team level issue and the issue is actually being worked on right now and what you see is i clicked into the actual code creation or the modification of that code so when you look at this you now see the, the health of the pipeline that's run you see the commits and the changes that have made you can also make comments on this and start code review right here inside of the merge request itself okay so again we're bringing the personas together to collaborate on all of this and see what's going on now what we've done is gone kind of down into the guts of what comprises the actual development work when this work is being done we can now start to go back and say well what's the status of the work that we were uh, trying to track okay so we're going to go back up a level and you'll see here we've got milestones and iterations so if I click on my milestones and take a look at some of the work that we've got going on okay I've got something here that's ending soon uh, we just have one issue in this this isn't a great example however what I wanted to point out was we've got the time rolled up we've got the issue weight rolling up and we've got a burn down chart. I pray that yours does not look like mine, right? My, my burn down chart looks terrible here. I'm probably in trouble with this one. Now we also, at this upper level, okay, let me go back a level up, we have iterations view, okay? So this is my current iteration. You can see that I've got a percent complete, I can see what's in flight, and I can see each of the issues going on here. More development here is to come. Beyond that, I can go to contribution analytics, I can get insights, issues, productivity. There's lots of different metrics that I can observe to kind of give us an idea of our continuity, our consistency across all of the different items that we're working on. So if I am planning work, some of the things that I'm going to want to look for is how often are we consistent with our issues open and close per month, right? What are we doing from a story and bug resolution perspective? That's something I can understand from this insights or from the issues analytics page and get a real good idea of what we're looking at, okay? Uh, productivity analytics. This would be an area where we can see our throughput, the number of commits, how much work is actually getting done in each and every sprint. Now, in this case, again, I don't have enough data here, so uh, I'm gonna move on from this point. But the idea is consistency, right? We're always looking for those high-performing teams and the validation that the things we're doing um, are recognizable, okay? And, and this gives us that data. One other thing, if you are a scrum master or the like, uh, we've talked a little bit about the issues. Notice this little red logo here, okay? One other thing we wanna watch for is how many of these little red icons show up within any page view. How much work dependency do we have? How many relationships, how many blocked items or our items that are blocked are showing up in our work, okay? We can also validate from here the carryover work, right? How many things did not get done within any given sprint based on our iterations and milestones view. So lots of different information is available here. One last thing that I want to show you. So I'm going to go into the project where we were looking earlier. And inside of this, we have a wiki. Now this wiki, if I look at this retrospective item here, provides us a location to log our retrospective data. You can see here in this particular example, I took a picture of a board from our Sprint 8 retrospective, and we could just comment in here together, right? What went well, what could have been done better, et cetera, the common retrospective example. Uh, this gives you one place to log your retros and keep that information close to everything else, right? So now we have the context of the work, we have the actual work itself, the health of the work, the health of the sprints. All this stuff is in one place and we can have the retrospective close by. Everything gets to live together. Thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed this Agile overview.